third generation Mini Countryman serves up an even trendier confection for youthfully minded customers in the lower mid-sized SUV segment. There's a divisive look, a completely redesigned and more practical cabin and full electric drivetrains for those wanting them. It's all about as far from the original wood panelled middle class 60s Countryman estate as you could imagine. Mini wants to be a full EV brand, but not quite yet, which is why Though new full electric variants headline this third generation Countryman lineup, a huge proportion of sales will still be of the combustion models we're focusing on here. With diesel consigned to history, these are all of the petrol powered sort and must all use the brand's usual Steptronic 7 speed dual clutch auto transmission. The big sales numbers are likely to be accounted for by the entry level front driven Countryman C with its 1.5 litre, 170 horsepower, three cylinder, mild hybrid turbo unit. Good for 62 miles an hour in 8.3 seconds, en route to 132 miles an hour. The other two combustion Countrymans have four cylinder, two litre units allied to that all four four wheel drive system I just mentioned. The Countryman S offers 218 horsepower, which means 0 to 62 in 7.1 seconds en route to 142 miles an hour. And the Countryman John Cooper Works, all four model we're trying here, has a prodigious 300 horsepower, which improves the 62 mile an hour sprint time to just 5.4 seconds on the way to 155 miles an hour if you're quick with the provided steering wheel paddles and use the boost overtaking function offered by the left hand one. This JCW variant gets the adaptive suspension setup as standard, which lowers the car by 15 millimeters and includes even firmer frequency selective dampers. It also gets a bassy, rich sounding engine note, which on closer inspection turns out to be mainly embellished by the audio speakers. At the other end of the ecological scale lie the full EV Countryman variants. These aren't our main focus here, but we'll brief you on the fact that there are two, both using a 64.7 kilowatt hour battery. Things kick off with the single motor Countryman Electric E, which offers 201 horsepower, 62 miles an hour in 8.6 seconds, and a range of 287 miles. The alternative is the Countryman Electric SE, which adds an extra electric motor on the rear axle, creating a nominal four-wheel drive system. This boosts total output to 308 horsepower with 494 newton meters of torque, and the 62 mile an hour sprint time drops to just 5.6 seconds, but range drops too, to 269 miles. Across the combustion and electric Countryman lineups, you get a range of mini experience drive modes. For rapid driving, you'll want the most eager one, go-kart. In the JCW model, this allows for the introduction of a brilliant bass pop and crackle from the exhaust on the overrun, lovely. There are plenty of other experience settings, though most of them seem to have more to do with coloured ambience and chimes than driving. Choose from core, green, vivid, timeless, personal, balance and trail. In third generation form, the Countryman offers the versatility of a compact crossover while maintaining iconic mini proportions. Short overhangs, a short bonnet and a contrasting long wheelbase. This contemporary exterior design is supported by clear cut surfaces, a slightly curved roof and a newly designed C-pillar, making the vehicle appear shorter. Okay, time to take a look inside. The cabin has the brand's usual dinner plate sized circular fascia screen and a couple of subtle toggle switches on the center stack. But otherwise this minimalist interior aims to set its own style trends. It's a design shared with the new era mini hatch, though here the extended dimensions allow for an enlarged center console. What you'll notice immediately is that there's no instrument binnacle. Instead, everything's relocated to that big round so-called mini interaction unit, an ultra thin 9.4 inch central monitor. That includes all the climate controls and all the infotainment functions, which can make this OLED display feel rather overburdened. Plus the speedometer too, though most models also feature head up display. Virtually all the previous generation cars, buttons and switches have been removed from the fascia and center console, including, unfortunately, the old rotary infotainment controller. 
A small panel with a few shortcut buttons is all that remains, with a twistable starter, a large toggle for gear selection, and a smaller one for the various experiences drive modes. Other design talking points include these vertical vents and this unusual fabric covering for the upper dash, which is made of knitted recycled polyester, and the finishing of which is determined by which of the three trim levels you select. There's a reasonable level of cabin storage, including this little personal mini branded lidded box, presumably for storing your personal mini branded effects. Enough on the front, let's take a look in the back. The redesigned platform has freed up an extra 130 millimetres of legroom and via an extra cost package, the backrest can individually adjust through six positions by up to 12 degrees and as before the seat base can slide by up to 13 centimetres. Make the most of all this and there'll be just enough room between 600 and 740 millimetres depending on seat base position for a six-footer to stretch out behind a front seat occupant of similar height, helped by the ease with which you can slide your feet beneath the seat ahead. OK, let's finish with a look out back. Boot space is improved, but only by a scant 10 litres over the old model, which means that once the near-vertical powered tailgate raises, you now get 460 litres of it in a long but rather shallow load bay. If everything needs to be folded flat, then up to 1,450 litres of space can be freed up. Today, Mini says a Countryman C will manage up to 46.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 138 grams per kilometre of CO2. The mild hybrid setup works as these systems usually do, fitting a powerful 48 volt starter generator and a tiny second battery enables a significant increase in the amount of brake energy that can be regenerated and stored. This energy is used not just to supply the electrical system, but also to lighten the combustion engine's workload and boost its power. The starter generator also increases efficiency by assisting the engine when driving at constant speeds and works the car's start-stop system. You'd expect that quite a drop in efficiency would be incurred by switching your attention instead to the four-cylinder, two-litre turbocharged petrol engine we're trying here. But in its mainstream 218 horsepower form, even saddled with all the extra weight of an all-four all-wheel drive system, the returns aren't all that much different. Up to 41.5 mpg and up to 155 grams per kilometre of CO2. This uprated 300 horsepower JCW models version of that 2 litre unit can't match that, of course. The quoted figures for this flagship variant are up to 36.2 mpg and up to 177 grams per kilometre. As for the Countryman electric models, well, we gave you the range figures for those in our driving section, 287 miles for the E and 269 miles for the SE. The 64.7 kilowatt hour battery that both variants use can be rapid charged at rates of up to 130 kilowatts and so connected can be replenished from 10 to 80% in half an hour. AC charging via the usual 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box takes 10 hours, dropping to six and a half if your home or office happens to have a three phase supply and you can fit an 11 kilowatt wall box. It's tempting to say that this is a different kind of Mini Countryman. The evolved look, the redesigned cabin, and in the case of the battery-powered variants, the switch from PHEV to full electric drive are all things that suggest that. Ultimately though, the thing that really makes this third generation design different is its subtle shift up market in size and price. So, it's just as well that, in terms of rear seat room and boot space, this is now a proper competitor for a Qashqai class lower mid-sized SUV with a little sprinkling of premium appeal that might also tempt in folk who would otherwise have opted for a poshly badged model in this class. The redesigned interior is a big improvement, the efficiency stats look competitive, and this model's fun-to-drive USP has been retained. If all that sounds tempting, then a new mini-adventure awaits.